your faces or 60% of all of your faces. Welcome to our guests. Welcome to our, uh, our congregants and our friends. Welcome to all of those in person and all of those on Zoom to TBT at camp. Thanks for making the journey, those of, us, of you who could be with us in person tonight. We always begin with a song of welcome in our congregation. So we invite you to turn to page 128 in this prayer book. Look for the page numbers in brackets. Page 128, Hine Matov, how good it is to be together as one community on this evening. good thing to have a simcha to celebrate and we're very very excited that David Jacoby we're celebrating with you this weekend as you become bar mitzvah yeah that's right that's right I appreciate those snaps from the back very good I like that a lot and so uh, to formally begin your role as a prayer leader in our community this Shabbat we invite you to come up along with your mom Stephanie and also your grandma, Emily, and your great aunt, Phyllis. And we're going to light some candles together. For everybody else, feel free to follow along in the Hebrew or the transliteration on page 120. Go ahead, yeah. As these Shabbat candles give light to all who behold them, so may we, by, by our lives, give light to all who behold us. As their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light, so may we, in our own day, be among those who kindle light. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher kishanu b'mitzvotam, v'sivanu So wonderful. You can, yeah, you can go ahead and sit down. Don't worry, we'll call you back up in a little bit. <laughs> and everybody else, this would be a great time to take a moment to perhaps greet somebody who you didn't come in with and wish them a Shabbat Shalom. As we have begun warming up our voices, we will join in song together with the Psalms of Kabbalat Shabbat, beginning with Shiru Ladonai, page 131. Page 131. Shiru Ladonai. 
Shabbat and joy. We speak in terms poetic, literary, and very immediately loving. The language that our mystics left us with is that of two loving partners, one looking toward God coming in on the horizon to welcome Shabbat into our midst. And so we join in this joyful song, Lechadodi. Lechadodi, Likrat Kala, Pane Shabbat Nekabala. My my great friend, let us go out and welcome Shabbat together. Luckily, we get to stay inside where it is nice and dry and warm as we welcome Shabbat into our space. But we do symbolically rise at the end, face the entrance to this recreation hall turned sanctuary of ours and, uh, and invite Shabbat to come into our, our presence and symbolically into our lives and our homes for the next 24 hours, bringing that sense of joy and peace and freedom which the ancient rabbis so wanted us to, to enjoy of Shabbat. So we're on page 138, 138 and 139. And we will be adding a new verse this week. So we're going to be singing verses 1 through 5, and then verse 9, at which point we will rise. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. 
144, Chatzik Kaddish. Please rise as we transition into our Ma'ariv service with Baruch Hu.
can have a seat. We'll continue with our prayer for the evening. God who changes the cycles of time and light. I don't know about you, but I was a little bit thrown off by the cycles of time and light this week. But that was not God's fault. That was about our industrialized society's need to balance factors that are probably no longer relevant. Although, the purpose of a service is not to rail against daylight saving time. We can have that conversation afterwards. (laughs) We'll appreciate the time for what it is and the control that we don't have over it. That God gives this beautiful beautiful time to us to do with what we will. Page 148. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bidvaro Ma'ariv Aravim Bechochma Poteach She'arim Uvitvuna Mishane Yitim Umachalif Et Hazmanim Umisader Et HaKochavim Bemish Merotehem Barakia Kirtsono Bore Yom Valayla Golel Or Mipne Choshech Vechoshech Mipne Or Uma avir yom umevi laila, um avdil ben yom uven laila, Adonai tseva od shemo, el chai vekayam, tamid yimloch alenu leolam vaed, baruchata Adonai, hama ariv aravim. Everlasting love you offered your people Israel by teaching us Torah and mitzvot, laws and precepts. Therefore, Adonai our God, when we lie down, when we rise up, we will meditate on your laws and your commandments. We will rejoice in your Torah forever. Day and night we will reflect on them, for they are our life, and doing them lengthens our days. Never remove your love from us. We praise you, Adonai, who loves your people, Israel.
בכובעך ובכל אשך ובכל ילדיך והיו הדברים האלה אשר נוחי מצבך היום על לבביך ושיננתם לבביך ודיברתם בם בשבתך ביתך ומלכתך בדרך ומשכפך בקומך וקשרתם לאות על ידיך והיו את התפות בעיניך וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובישריך למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי ואיתם קדושים לאלוהיכם אני אדוני אלוהיכם אשר הוצאתי אתם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם אלוהים אני אדוני Nice, beautiful leading so far, David. We're going to stay up for one for Micha Mocha. And first we'll read together on page 157, everybody, in English, at the top. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands, marching together. Page 158. Micha Mocha. Sure, you want to sing that one? Yes. Micha Mocha Ba'eli Adonai. Micha Mocha to welcome you back, young men, for the end of the service and for tomorrow morning's special ceremony. We'll continue now with uh, Vishamru, which is found on page 162. People of Israel shall keep Shabbat. Observing Shabbat throughout the ages is a covenant for all time. I don't know if it's a tradition at Ramah camp to, uh, to do a, a drum roll before each verse. We're not doing that version? It's not a tradition? No? Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe that's a nifty thing. I don't know. This, this is the one you did? Didn't you, didn't you spend the summer in Ramah camp? One summer. Ramah Berkshires. Berkshires. Oh, Superior Berkshires. Superior Ramah camp. I see we've touched a nerve. All right. Well, whatever your custom is, I will be, uh, I'll be drum rolling a little bit in between the verses. Some
Thought has blown the marketplace away. There's a song on the wind and joy in the trees. Shabbat arrives in the world, scattering a song in the silence of the night, and eternity utters a day. Page 164, please rise. Adonai, open up my lips, that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Eloheinu, Avoteinu, Behimoteinu, May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. And may this day fulfill its promise. Baruch atah Adonai mekadesh ha-shabbat. Blessed are you, O God, for this holy Shabbat. We continue in a moment of silent prayer. You can use the words between page 172 and page 180 to inspire you or just take a moment to offer the prayer of your heart and feel free to take the time you need. When you're through, please have a seat. We'll continue on page 180.
As you know, we observed Veterans Day yesterday, and thinking of all those in our congregation, our community, and our country who served, thought it would be appropriate to offer this prayer. Ribono shel olam, anu korim levirchatecha al chaylei tzva arzot habrit, anashim v'hagvarim ha'amitzim shegvuratam misiratam v'medinatenu megina al kulanu. Ribono shel olam yoter mikol anu nosim tefila sheyizku lashuv b'shalom b'mhera b'vriut tova l'mishpechotehem ula artsam. Baruch ata Adonai mekor hashalom. O oh God, we call to you for your blessings upon all U.S. service members, the brave women and men whose strength and sacrifices for our country protects us all. God of peace, above all, we pray that they should merit to return in peace and health speedily to their families and to their land. Blessed are you, source of peace. And uh, I'm thinking especially of our friend Austin as we read that prayer because I know he's about to deploy so for all of you who know Austin, or Mr. Austin from the preschool, perhaps, uh, and you have a chance to wish him well when you see him over the next few weeks, I'm sure he would appreciate it as he's about to uh, go, go to serve for a year in Wisconsin, if I remember correctly. Yeah. We now turn our hearts to those who are in need of healing. I'd like to share an apocryphal tale, perhaps a true tale, about the anthropologist Margaret Mead, who, so the story goes, was asked by a student of hers in class, when is the definition of civilization's beginning? When did civilization truly start? You might think that it would be when those seashells were discovered, the first currency, or perhaps when the first communal structures of housing were found, that point in time. But no, she said it was actually when the first skeleton was discovered of a human being who had a healed femur bone, a break in the femur that was healed. Because it's very difficult to recover by oneself from such a break. And it's very laborious to care for someone and protect someone who's going through that recovery, especially without the tools of modern medicine. And so when you find somebody who actually had that kind of a break in the bone and they clearly recovered from it, it's a sign that civilization had evolved to the point where people cared so much about sacrificing a good deal to care for one who was so grievously injured. And so in that respect, we carry forward this idea that a measure of our civilization, our civilizedness and our humanity, is the way that we care for those who are in need of healing among our community. And there are many of them, I'm sorry to say. Among our temple members, we think tonight of April D'Amato, Norma Diamond, Henry Gettenberg, Sandra Hyman, Marsha Jacoby, Tom Louie, Josh Lipschitz, and Sabrina Maurer. And our loved ones include Connie Ambrosino, Harriet Cohn Haggerty, Rochelle Downheimer, Mickey Bart, Jay Fliss, Sue Yaris, Rita Mandel, Mark Ostriker, Sydney Scher, Bart Young, Soraya Casey, Sarah Bryant, Monica Capoziello, Helen Dreyfus, Florence Zolin, Betsy Carlson, Cheryl Hawkins, Ben Peck, Martha Potter, Mark Potter, Joan Sidney, Catherine Marsland, Danielle Scorano, Susan Seidel, Robert White, Ira Weiss, Elizabeth Powers Brown, Michael Morissette, and Lois Polikoff. If there are others who we'd like to add their names to our prayers at this time, feel free to say their name aloud as I come around to see you in this space or feel free to put their name in the chat and I'll read it aloud if you're on Zoom.
Roz Cheslock, Bino Gopal, Kristen Schoeder, and Pam Posey. We pray in the merit of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Rachel, Rebecca, and Leah, that they find healing of body, mind, and spirit in days to come. Turn to page 371 in our prayer books and join together in this familiar melody for Misha Berach. A national, actually international, Netflix sensation these days is Squid Games. It's in the vein of Hunger Games, or Lord of the Flies, for those of you who read it in school, but considerably more violent, which is really saying something. You know about PG-13, right? Given its br brutality, this show, I think, should probably have a rating of about PG-50. But the thing that's truly great about Squid Games is not its violence or even its production values, both of which are very over the top. It's the profound exploration of the human psyche. The show raises many questions and moral quandaries, one of the most important being, how much will it take for a generally ethical person to betray his own sense of what is right? The characters in the show are each on a journey. They have made huge mistakes in their lives and are searching for, among other things, redemption. Maybe then, the primary theme of the show is that. That is the theme that so many millions of fans across 80 countries have connected to. Our Torah, too, is full of these sorts of questions and journeys. The characters are often complex and not always likable. Jacob is an excellent example of a flawed character on the road to redemption. He and his brother are at odds from day one. Opposite personalities, opposite life goals, opposite temperaments and even physical characteristics. Esau is a hyper-masculine macho man. He's a hunter, a hairy guy. He's strong. Jacob, says the Torah portion, is a mild man, Ish Yoshev Ohalot, a guy who keeps to his tent. In other words, he's an indoors kid. I was an indoors kid too, it's okay. He's also the second born in his twinship, meaning that his older brother Esau is in line for all sorts of inheritance goodies. And I'm sure David will jump in if I say something wrong because he studied this portion really closely. 
It, I understand, we're gonna get to the next one. Jacob's story goes throughout multiple Torah portions. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Do you think that's a lot? Just look at Joseph. Joseph has like 15 chapters just to himself. But anyway, I digress. Okay, so Jacob, at least I know the kid's listening, right? <laughs> Very good. Okay, so Jacob, who is a little bit more on the conniving side than his brother, who's a little bit, you know, more of a simpleton, salt of the earth type of guy. Jacob plots with his mother, Rebekah, to defraud Esau of his birthright and blessing. So Esau threatens to kill Jacob, and that makes Jacob flee to his ancestral homeland of Haran, and that's where we start, David, right? With Vayetze, with he goes out, he goes forth to eventually get to Haran. And so in this week's Torah portion, he's on the road, he's in the middle of the wilderness, he's left Beersheba, right in the south of Israel, going north, and as the sun sets, he stops for the night and has a very famous dream. He sees a cosmic stairway reaching down from the heavens, going all the way up, the angels ascending and descending. Amidst this mind-bending vision, God speaks to him, promising protection and a bright future. Jacob wakes up from this fantastic dream and he is moved. His literal and figurative journey from tent to wilderness has transformed him. All of the comfort of that cozy tent, all of that he leaves behind, finding a new sense of personal significance in the desert of the promised land. According to the Midrash, he glimpses in that moment of the latter a vision of Mount Sinai to come, seeing ahead to Israel's covenantal purpose, receiving the Torah. In awe and humility, he cries out, how awesome is this place? Surely God is present here and I did not even know it. Now this experience, I believe, marks a significant turning point in Jacob's life one in which he begins to redirect his considerable ambition toward a purpose greater than himself alone. He realizes he is a part of a larger story yet to be written. I believe this is the first time that he really starts to think about other people. As David will tell us about tomorrow, this is the first of many times Jacob reinvents himself. Now, to be honest, there are still many more obstacles in front of Jacob than there are behind him. He must labor for 14 years in order to marry the woman he loves. He must confront his brother, who last they met wanted to kill him. He must contend with the jealousy and favoritism among his wives and eventually among his 13 children. Ambition, he learns, has its costs. And he certainly internalizes some hard lessons along the way. The 11th century poet and biblical commentator, Rabbi Solomon Ibn Gavirol, believed that the stairway and the angels in Jacob's dream reflect the spiritual quest of every human being. In this interpretation, Jacob sees that the human soul yearns to be close to God, ascending gradually step by step as he grows in wisdom throughout his life. So although says this teaching, later we'll say the Hasidic masters, although Jacob closes his eyes that night, in a more profound sense, he opens them for the very first time. Or as the American poet E.E. E. Cummings would later write, the eyes of his eyes begin to open. Anybody know that poem? It's a beautiful one. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs raises the question, why is Jacob so important? Why is he so often credited with naming the entire Jewish people, for instance? We are called Kehilat Yaakov, right? The congregation of Jacob. We are called Am Yisrael, or B'nai Yisrael, the nation or people of Israel, which is, of course, what his name becomes. Jacob, or Israel, is the man whose name we bear. Yet Jacob did not begin the Jewish journey. Abraham did. Jacob faced no trial like that of Isaac and the binding. He did not lead the people out of Egypt 
or bring the Torah like Moses did. So why did he succeed where Abraham and Isaac failed? We could probably all offer a different answer to this question. I believe personally that it's because while Abraham was largely static and obedient, while Isaac was passive, we just don't hear a lot from him at all. And in fact, he's most famous in the Midrash for being more willing to be passive, to be the more willing sacrifice. Jacob, though, was the first true journeyer. And I don't mean that just in the geographical sense, because obviously Abraham and Isaac both journeyed from place to place, a very long journey. But not just geographically. Jacob also journeyed psychologically and also, importantly, morally. In maturity, he learns, he grows, he transforms. When we look at his story, we can perhaps see something of ourselves in that growth and in those struggles. He awakens, perhaps in this moment, perhaps when he wrestles with the mysterious man, with the mysterious Ish. He awakens to his purpose. He receives that new name after wrestling all night. He, he is Israel. He is Yisrael, the one who struggles with God and prevails, says the Torah. That is his legacy. That is our legacy, too. We are all of us Israel, God wrestlers. We are of struggle, of error, but also of vision, of purpose, of a greater life significance waiting for us to pursue it. So tonight, Gesundheit, as we look around us, perhaps we feel a little bit of the dislocation of Jacob in the desert, which is just why Diana has set up the lanterns to help guide you back to your car outside. Because I know the terrain is a little uneven and we're out at camp, so there's leaves and wetness everywhere. Perhaps here at camp, the cool air and the Spartan accommodations help you look at something in a different way. May we all embrace the possibility that the eyes of our eyes, so to speak, might be opened to something new and perhaps tonight even something exhilarating. Shabbat Shalom. Continue with our service with Alenu on page 586. Please rise. A seat, except for Tina Salitker. Tina, please come forward. And we're glad you're here to address us on behalf of our congregational leadership this evening. You can take it off if you want. Ah, a breath. <laughs> Shalat Shabbat Shalom again, everyone. Um, my name is Tina Salidker. I currently serve on the board as co-chair of the Social Justice Committee. And a warm welcome to any guests who are here with us this evening. And mazel tov to David and the Jacoby family as you prepare to celebrate becoming a bar mitzvah. Tomorrow, join us for Torah study at 9 a.m. led by Dr. Jason Gaines. Links will be in your inbox. Um, at 10 a.m., we'll have the Shabbat service on Zoom as we celebrate David Jacoby becoming a bar mitzvah. 
Next Friday, November 19th, our popular Young Family Shabbat returns at 5.30 right here at Camp Laurelwood, followed at 6.30 by the special service that the fourth through seventh grade students will help to lead. And now I have to put in a plug as social justice chair. I want to alert you to look for information that will be coming out about a delicious take-home dinner you can order for December 2nd. It'll be prepared by chefs from Sanctuary Kitchen, accompanied by a Zoom with one of the chefs, and is in collaboration with our Shoreline Interfaith Refugee Resettlement efforts. Um, by now, you should have received a letter in the mail about our annual fund. Thank you for considering a contribution in this exciting transitional year for TBT. And again, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you very much, Jim. Among the many exciting things that are going to be going on in the coming weeks is we have Mitzvah Day this weekend, Sunday. this Sunday, and we know that a lot of our religious school families will be participating in that. But I also wanted to mention, you might have seen in your inbox, that we're going to uh, have a commemoration for Kristallnacht, which was also this week. And uh, it'll be a really interesting one because our senator from Connecticut, um, Senator Blumenthal, will actually be presenting the family of a Greek Orthodox priest with a recognition and, a, and an award for the many uh, Jews that he saved uh, during the Shoah. Um, this is the family of that Greek Orthodox priest. And, um, and he's one of those who was formally recognized by Yad Vashem as, um, as a righteous Gentile. So that should be very meaningful and interesting. And it's going to be on Zoom, so very accessible. So check your email for that, too. And, um, and we'll all have the opportunity also to learn more about the Interfaith Refugee Resettlement Project uh, at services next week, I hope. So, uh, so we'll look forward to, to seeing you for that as well, whether here or on Zoom. And I think uh, that's all I have to say. Do you have any other announcements, Cantor? All right. Uh, we'll turn now to, uh, to page 594 as we prepare for this moment of memory in Kaddish. It is a fearful thing to love what death can touch, a fearful thing to love, to hope, to dream, to be, to be and owe to lose, a thing for fools this, and a holy thing, a holy thing to love. For your life has lived in me, your laugh once lifted me, your word was gift to me. To remember this brings a painful joy, tis a human thing, love, a holy thing, to love what death has touched. We share the names of those who have passed away in the recent seven or 30 days whose families are in the period of Shiva or Shaloshim. Feel free to rise as I read your loved one's name if you are comfortable doing so, if you're in a period of mourning this evening. We remember Gary Widlitz, husband of Pat, Gloria Sack, wife of Ed, Jay Greenblatt, son of Cynthia and David Greenblatt, and brother of Stacy Reed, and Arthur Stanger, father of Larry and Jen. Those who passed away at this time in years gone by include Anna Sabaki, Jerry Kindman, Robert Schulman, Leslie Habelo, Harry Coburn, Al Dreyfus, Char Charlotte Aaronworth, Max Gammerman, Leonard Marcus, Beatrice Freed, Ruth Schaefer, Phyllis Shapiro, Jean Horwich, Shirley Fausti, and Norma Krug Horwich. There are others in our community who are in mourning or wish to share the name of someone you're thinking of, who has departed your life in this world but remains in your heart ever present. Feel free to share their name if you wish, whether in person or in the chat on Zoom. Morris Greenberg.
Holding them all in our hearts, we rise as one congregation in solidarity with our Jewish brothers and sisters across the world on Shabbat as we hallow God's name with these sacred words, page 598. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei rabah be'alma divra chireute v'yamlich malchute b'chayechon u'v'yomechon u'v'chaye d'cho b'yit Yisrael Ba'agala uvizman kari v'imru, amen. Yehei shmei raba mevorach le'alam u'le'almei amaya. Yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit romam v'yit nase. V'yit hadar v'yit ale v'yit halal shmei dikudesha b'richu. Le'ela min kol b'yuchata v'shirata. Tush b'chata v'nechemata. Da'am iran be'alma v'imru, amen. Yehei shlama raba min shmaya, v'chayim alenu ve'el kol Yisrael, v'imru amen. O se shalom b'imromav, hu ya ase shalom, alenu ve'el kol Yisrael, v'imru amen. May the source of comfort bring comfort to all the mourners of our people and all those who mourn, as we say, amen. a seat, except for the Jacobis. David, can you please bring your bros and your mom and dad up together? Okay, lead some kiddish together. What's up? It's vodka. No, it's grape juice. It's grape juice. <laughs> Good question. I had one. You had what? Well, I'm glad I didn't contribute to your delinquency. Right? <laughs> All right. You ready, Cantor? Ready. Well, David. You ready, David? Do you want to come over here? Baruch Baruch atadonai Elohei melech haolam Borei peri ha-gafen Baruch atadonai Elohei melech haolam Asher gichanu v'mitvot ha'verat avanu v'shabat kocho be'ahava uvratzon inchilanu zikaron l'mase v'reshit ki hu yom techila l'mekrae kodesh zecher l'tiyan mitraim ki vanu v'achata v'atanu kida grab the challah? This is a special challah, right? So just take the whole thing, take the whole thing. Okay. It's okay, we got it. It's all right, it's all good. Great Aunt Phyllis, thank you for this beautiful, beautiful challah, which we will now say the blessing over. <laughs> Ready, David, to read us? David, do you want to sit down or do you want to stay for I don't know long? Up to you. Okay, good. Right, come over here. That is a good one. 
David requests Adono. I've got it pulled up. Amazing. That's quite a coincidence. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, David, you didn't know this, but we're going to have an in-depth interview now, okay? Ready? David, what is your name? David. I didn't really think of any other questions. David, are you excited to become bar mitzvah? Yeah. That's the right answer. Uh, David, are you excited to celebrate with your family tomorrow? Yeah. Cool. We're getting a lot of in-depth conversation back and forth right now. Uh, David, was that challah delicious? Yeah. <laughs> David, are you excited to see some, perhaps some camp friends this weekend? Yeah. Cool. Um, are we going to have a, a great time tomorrow? Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so too, but you know what? I'll be a little more confident. It's going to be a great day and you're already doing a great job because okay. we're so proud of you. So we're going to end our service together with a song that I know you know and everybody else can join with us too. It's Adon Olam. Cantor is going to, join, to lead us on page 625. It's the one that sounds like the trombone, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Adon Olam, Adon Olam, Asher Malam. Well, just as we came in blessing and hopefully with a little joy in our hearts, I hope we're leaving with at least as much joy, if not more, looking to this beautiful weekend, this beautiful Simcha, and beautiful Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom.